Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 2D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode we built ourselves this cannon plant right here. We set it up so it was firing off, it was doing everything it needs to do, we could kill it, everything like that is working great. Alright, in this episode guys, I'd like to delve a little deeper into the, the 2D engine, the 2D physics engine. And we're going to take a look today at something called the hinge joint. Alright, so let's get started. What I really want to do in this episode is take a look at something called the hinge joint. And I want to use that hinge joint, I want to show you how to use that hinge joint to do a number of different things. Ultimately, in the game that I created and have already shown you, uh, I use the hinge joint to build myself a trapdoor. Uh, and that is just one obvious example of what you'd use a hinge joint for. So let's take a look at the hinge joint right now and then we'll discuss a few other options that you might want to put into your game, alright? I'm gonna grab this bridge black right here and I'm just gonna drag it and plop it into the scene. Where is she? Right there. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's make it uh, 0.5 and let's make it 0.5. Now, this bridge, I basically want it to be something the character can walk on, so I'm going to need a number of different things for it. First thing I'm going to need, I'm going to add component, I'm going to add a Physics 2D, a Box Collider. And the Box Collider, just like before when we added it, is going to be used for, let me just make it the right size, uh, to allow the character to walk, get there, allow the character to walk on this thing. That's basically what I want it for. Let's lower it down a bit. And let's make this uh, 7.6. That's pretty good. All right, so this basically allows my character to walk on here. I'm going to make it automatically into uh, the ground layer, so when our character walks on it, uh, he is going to uh, he's going to be able to jump or whatever. All right, the first thing I want to do. Now, let's take a look at what the hinge joint is. That's probably the best way to, to start, because <laughs> you've never seen it, and I'm just babbling here. What I want to do is I want to go down here to Add Component, boom, I'm going to go to Physics 2D, boom, and if we take a note right now, I've got a Transform, a Sprite Renderer, and a Box Collider. That's all I've got. I'm going to go down here to Hinge Joint, and you can see there's a number of other joints, actually. There's a Spring Joint, a Distance Joint, Hinge Joint, Slider Joint, Wheel Joint, and a bunch of different uh, effectors as well, forces and effectors. I think in, I think in this initial series, we're only going to take a look at the hinge joint and one of the effectors, the area effector actually. Uh, that's what I used in my game, and maybe in future episodes uh, or future series where I build a different game, um, we'll discuss some of the other options for the joints. But today we're going to add a hinge joint, so boom, there it goes. Now when I added that hinge joint, you can see that it automatically added a rigid body and the hinge joint. All right, it's added both of these components. You cannot get rid of this rigid body. Once you've added the, the hinge joint, as long as the hinge joint is there, if I say the remove component, it's going to say, whoa, you can't remove me. I'm needed for the hinge joint. So don't worry about it if, if you suddenly got an extra rigid body in there. Okay, so let's take a look at the hinge joint now. The hinge joint, it's got these weird, these weird lines connecting it. Uh, these lines, this line here anyway, is connecting both the anchor and the connected anchor. And basically... Basically what a hinge joint does is it creates a pivot point on a sprite. An area on a sprite, which the sprite will pivot around based on gravity. No animation required at all. Alright, so let's say that, well, let's say that right now I don't have a collide connected. I don't have an actual rigid body referenced in here. Uh, so I can actually physically move. Let's move this uh, connected anchor a bit. Um, let's grab it and drag it. So basically, these two points working together, let's zoom in. These two points, the anchor point and the connected anchor, will define an area in which this object will rotate around. So let's just right away say, okay, I want to make a... Uh, I'll make it on this side so I can fix something up later as well. Uh, let's say I say I want to have this object rotate downwards uh, whenever the character walks on it. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my anchor, or sorry, my connected anchor. Uh, and right now it's in world space because I don't have a rigid body in this reference. As long as nothing is here, these values will be world space values. And what that means is if I physically move this object, you can see that connected anchor point will stay in place. All right? Uh, it's connected somewhere to the world. So, and let's move the anchor point as well. Let's just be able to grab it here. Bam! And drag it and overlap those two. So, overlapping those two locations, this anchor and this connected anchor, uh, is going to define the point in which my object rotates in the scene. Watch what happens. Uh, maximize on play is off and it's muted. Watch what happens to this object when I hit play. Alright? Boom! 
the object automatically rotates around that specific point. And it will continue to swing like this as long as uh, it'll slow down slowly because I've actually got in my rigid body, I've actually got some drag. Uh, but it'll swing like this for quite a while. If I want to reduce, can I reduce the angular drag to zero? You can. If it's got no angular drag on it, I don't think it'll ever stop operating. 0.5. Uh, 0 0.05 is what it was. 0.05. Um, if you uh, do not adjust this, this angular drag, it'll just keep going forever and ever. Uh, sorry, it, it, if it's 0, it'll just keep going forever and ever and ever. You could create a, a, I don't know, a swinging door or whatever else you wanted to. The character can basically walk into this now and physically push it. It's got a collider on it. They could physically push this door open. All right? So that's not really that's not really a, a, a an appropriate trap door yet because it's not a trap. The guy the, the player is going to see that and say, "Well, I can jump over that," or you know, it's swinging. I'm not going to try and do anything. But let's say instead, let's take a look at the next option down here. The next option is the use motor, and the use motor will will basically apply a constant force uh, to this object and cause it to rotate around the pivot point. So let's say I I have a motor speed of uh, 100 and I have a motor force of 100. Um, the motor speed is how fast this thing is going to be turning and the force is obviously the force that's applied to it to hold it in position or to, to cause it to be moving. All right. So if I hit play right now, watch what happens with my use motor clicked on. Boom. Now we've got this thing rotating at a constant rate around that object, around this pivot point. All right, it's basically a motor. You could build this. You could use this to build a, a blade trap. You know, if your character walked into this, they'd get cut in half, or or a door that's periodically opened or closed, or or whatever you want. And you can adjust how quickly this thing moves uh, by adjusting these uh, these motor forces here. All right. If I give this motor speed a negative value instead, it'll go the other way. All right. Now it's rotating in the other direction. All right, so far, so good. Uh, and last thing, I'm going to turn off motor speed for a minute, use motor for a minute. I'm going to take a look at this use limits. Now, the use limits will basically allow us to, to define hard limits that this object can't go past. So let's say I give it a hard limit of, of 1 and a lower angle of 1 and upper angle of 90. Watch what happens when I hit play now. Boom. All right, it goes to a certain location, to a certain spot, all the way to 90 degrees, and then it stops. It stops hard, all right? And if I have the lower, the lower limit of 1, watch what happens if I turn on the motor. Let's see if this is enough motor power to cause it to go up. Okay, there we go. So the motor itself is no longer being allowed to turn because we have a hard lower angle of one degree. It cannot go past one degree, and it can only go down to 90 degrees. Now with these two options on, watch what happens when I run my character over there. Let's run over there, dude. Jumpity jump, and watch what happens when I step on. Wow! Wow! We've got ourselves a trap door. All right. Great. That is the option in world space. Now I want to show you the option that we've got if we are using a referenced rigid body as well. So not a whole lot will change uh, once I add a rigid a rigid body that I'll use as its as a as a connector point connector point. Uh, let's uh, let's grab this other one here and we'll just toss another. Oops, grab this guy and just drop another one in here. Uh, and let's make it. Uh, let's do the same thing. Let's make it 0.5 and 0.5. And once again, I'm going to add component. I'm going to add my physics 2D so my character could actually walk on it. Uh, let's make it that. And uh, OK, I'm going to make it the right size. I think this was 7.5. And what was this one? 0 0.8. 0 0.8. 0 0.8 with a negative 1.3. Negative 0.13. All right, there we go. OK, so that's exactly the same. Um, Let's take a look at this now. With with this object uh, used as the the reference point instead, uh, let's go back to our hinge, our hinge joint, and right oh right now we've currently uh, we've currently got in our in our connected body we've got nothing. All right, you can see here that the connected rigid body requires a reference to a rigid body 2D. So if we actually wanted to connect this to this. We actually have to go in here, and we'd have to add in immediately a rigid body, physics 2D rigid body. Boom. So the requirements are there. 
requirements, requirements are all met. Now, let's say I wanted to take this guy and I wanted to use him in this hinge joint. Now, let's see what that's going to do. Watch this point here. Remember I told you that this negative 25 and this negative 5 uh, for the connected anchor is referring to uh, world space, global space? Uh, once you put a reference into this rigid body, connected rigid body here, once you put a reference into there, instead of being in global world space, what it's going to be using instead is going to be using the local coordinates of the rigid body you're connecting to. So watch, if I grab this, drag it, and I drop it in there, boom, we've got our connector going way out here. Not what we want. We want it to be somewhere closer. Let's put it right back where it was. Uh, it doesn't... This connector point, this, this, these anchor points don't actually have to be physically connected to this object. It could have been anywhere. And when I've got a reference in there, it doesn't have to be physically connected to, uh, to this object over here either. It doesn't have to be connected to that object that you're using as your rigid body uh, connector point. You can put these anchors anywhere you want in the scene. And I want to I make sure that you understand that. It doesn't have to be associated with that. But watch what happens first of all. If I hit play, Oh, <laughs> I forgot to do one thing. This rigid body over here really should be a uh, kinematic. Kinematic, if it's not set to kinematic, it just falls. It, it goes away. But what you want, what you did see there is that it dragged the trapdoor with it. All right, so those two objects will stay connected. Make sure is kinematic is set. All right, boom, play. Now with is kinematic on, it's not actually physically moving. But if I drag this object around, you can see that I am physically dragging my trapdoor around with me. All right, now, let's stop this for a second. Uh, let's go back to this, this, uh, this component here, uh, and let's go down to our hinge joint. Um, we use collide connected, it's turned off currently. Let's say instead I turn off these, these limits and I hit play again, watch what happens. These, this object, this secondary object, is automatically passing through uh, the first one, all right? It's not in any way colliding. Even though we have colliders on both, with this option turned off, with Collide Connected turned off, it ignores all of the actual uh, colliders that are located on each of the objects. All right? Let's say I say Collide Connected, and I turn it back, and I hit play again. Boom, watch what happens. It only gets to a specific location until the two colliders are banging into each other, and then it stops rotating. All right? So far, so good. Now, if I turn back on my Use Limits, and I say Play, now, as long as these two are set up so that they won't collide together, if I run my little dude over there, run, 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 jump over that thing, and I jump on top of this, boom, we still have our, our trap door. All right? So that is the real difference between the two. That's the difference between this, uh, between the use of the connected rigid body and not the use. So basically, one allows you to have um, world space coordinates if there's nothing here, and it allows you to use local coordinates uh, for the connected body if, if you are using one and associated with it. All right? All right. So far, so good. Now, I want to take a look at other options. This is what I used in my game. I used a trapdoor, uh, and it allowed me to get to a different level, basically. Great. You know, you could use it as that. You could use it as an actual trap, or if the character runs across it, he falls to his oblivion. You know, whatever. Whatever you want. Uh, let's take a look at a couple other options, or a couple other uses of, of the hinge joint. All right? Okay, so, so for the next part, I'm just going to delete these, and we're going to start over again, because uh, I'm not actually going to be using them for anything. So I'm just going to make this really, really quickly right here. Uh, I'm going to add in... Uh, another one of these, let's just make it uh, 0.5 and 0.5 again. Uh, and uh, I'm going to add a Physics 2D hinge joint. Boom. All right. And it's in global space, so it's going way the F over here. Let's just drag it and drop it and zoom in. Uh, and let's just put it for he right here for now. All right. Uh, and I'm going to move my anchor point so it matches. Poop. Move it over a bit so I can get to it. There we go. Just make it, oh, just make it so it matches right there. All right. So right now, you guys already know. If I hit play, boom, it's going to rotate around that point. Awesome. Perfect. Now, something interesting. Let's say you want to make some kind of chain, or or so let's just say you want to make a chain. All right. For now, let's add another one of these. Let's actually physically copy this one here. Edit, duplicate it. Edit, duplicate. Boom. Where'd it go? Right here. Let's move it over. All right, so now we've got ourselves uh, a second uh, one of these. They're exactly the same. They're identical. Let's move this over here for now. 
Uh, what I want to do is on this secondary one, in this one that I just created, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find the hinge joint. And what I want to do is I want to add this black body or this black um, bridge as the reference in the first one. All right, and then I'm going to physically move this over to here. Actually, I'm going to physically move it so it's here and here. Uh, and let's add one more, just for fun. Let's add one more. This guy here, edit, duplicate, boom. There we go. We got another one. Drag it over. And this time, I want to add this one, this, this uh, bridge here, as the reference instead. And that's pretty good. Let's just move this over a bit so everything's aligned. All right. Watch what happens when I hit play. Play. Basically now we've got ourselves a really awesome swinging pendulum, all right? You could use this to make some kind of chain, let's say. Let's say you want to make some kind of chain or or anything like that that would actually physically move uh, physically move with this object. In fact, let's say let's say instead you wanted to make this. Let me hit stop for a minute here. Uh, I'm going to go on to this guy and I'm going to add a I'm going to add another component. I'm going to add another uh, 2D physics hinge joint. All right? Instead, in this one here, I'm going to leave it in global space, and I'm going to drag this point all the way over here into our corner right here like that. I'm going to move my anchor in the same location just like this. So now, when I hit play, watch what happens. Basically, what I just built is a rope bridge. All right, If I went through... And let's say to each of these things here, I add a component. I'm going to add a Physics 2D uh, box collider. Uh, and those might be a little bit long. I don't want them touching. So let's just make this into uh, 0 0.75. I, I won't I'll only, oops, 7.5, 7.5. Uh, that's fine. I'm going to do that for each one of these things here. Add a component, a Physics 2D, and a box collider, and make it point, or 7.5. And I'm just doing this so they don't touch together. I don't want to deal with the fact that they're touching. Uh, and lastly, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to add a component, and I'm going to add a Physics 2D, and I'm going to add a Box Collider, and I'm going to make it uh, 7.5. Awesome. If my character, and let's add each one of these things here to the appropriate ground, and ground, and ground. Let's say my character now jumps onto this bridge. Watch what happens. It's going to be kind of cool. We've got ourselves a rope bridge right away. Let's run over. Oh, I hit the thing. Let's make sure I don't get killed here. Jump. Boom. You can see I've got a really cool rope bridge. All right. So that is a couple of different uses that you might want to use your hinge joint for. It works great. All right. I really like the hinge joint. Uh, like I said, I used it originally uh, for a trap door. But the uses of the hinge joint is limited only to your imagination. You can link a bunch of them together. You can put multiple hinge joints on the on the same object. Uh, there's a billion different things you could do with this, guys. So I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. There is your hinge joint. Use it for what you want to. I, I want you guys to tell me what you use it for in the comments down below. All right? Once you guys are done, you say, wow, I really like my idea here. This is what I'm using it for. Then tell me down below. All right, guys? I'm looking forward to hearing this stuff. I really hope that you are taking what I'm teaching you and you're using it for your own stuff. You're not just copying what I'm, I'm doing. I've given you all of the components, all the necessary objects to build this game, but I really want you guys to build your own. Even if you just take mine and make it 100 times better, I don't care. Just show me the awesomeness that you're doing with what I'm teaching. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the hinge joint. I hope so. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. A thumbs down tells me what you like and what you don't like. Make sure you say in the comments why you gave me the thumbs down, and that way I can make changes. All right, guys, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.